change. What's going on, brother? Happy Friday to you. How you doing? I'm doing well. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. We made it through the week, everybody. We made it through, made it through the week. week. Welcome to for some people. Hey, man, listen here. Welcome to Canada Talk with Roz, everybody. It's Friday. It was the 13th. It was last week, so last Friday. So, man, we almost close to Thanksgiving, but we ain't going to be the same type of Thanksgiving, but it is Friday. I'm so happy. Um, how, how things been hanging out and shaking for you, brother? Yeah, man. Uh, you know, I, I'm looking forward to Thanksgiving, but obviously it's going to be a little bit different this year. Uh, you know, so I, I'm just praying that everybody is, uh, you know, staying safe, keeping your, your, you know, thinking of your family members. Now is the time to be, uh, you know, not selfish, you know, and I think right now, sometimes we want that need, you know, we need that human touch. Uh, but right now we got to be, you know, extremely careful as, as things are continue to rise. So just be safe, uh, you know, but I'm excited about today's conversation. I think it, it picks up right from something that we've been talking about since this summer, you know, more than the moment continues on uh, talking about how do we support uh, black and brown brands? How do we support uh, black and brown communities? How do we, you know, just do the work that we, we know needs to be done? Uh, mm. and, and what does that actually look like? So uh, I'm excited today. I'm excited as well, man. So we're not going to keep it. We ain't going to hold you guys up. We're going to bring the funk to you. We're going to tell you what we're talking about. And then we're going to drop the mic. And then we're going to go. And that's going to be the wrap. But um, <laughs> no, long story short, guys, you know, as we get ready for, um, you know, the holiday seasons and, and, and again, um, no matter how you celebrate the season, there's always been some part of uh, of buying, exchanging of goods or, or exchanging of of or currency to purchase something or um, be it dinner or, you know, products or what have you. And, you know, one thing that we really focus on here at, at, with uh, M4MM and specifically, you know, Eric and I together is that we've been wanting to really challenge the cannabis industry, not only to buy from black owned brands within the industry, but also for black owned businesses and individuals and, um, you know, folks to buy from black, to buy and recycle those dollars. And to talk about the economic impact that we could make if we were to just recycle our dollars with black owned businesses. So I'm so happy to bring our, our first guest. We have Miss Chantel Clea Goins. Hi, Chantel. How are you? I am doing well. How are you guys? Great. And then we have next Dr. Adrian Adams. Hey, Dr. Adams, how are you, brother? Hi, how are you doing? Good afternoon, everybody. Hey, what's up, Dr. Yeah, absolutely. What's up? <laughs> So let me let me before I before I get going on my little soapbox, I want to first introduce Chantel, and Chantel's going to tell you a little bit about herself, and and she's going to tell you why she's on this show today and what she's created yeah. and why it's so important. So Chantel, you got the floor, you my know, love. Actually, actually, let Go me ahead. bring Chantel in right because I, I got bring, it, I bring got it in right. Story, right? <laughs> so, like earlier this week. I saw a text message come by, uh, or I'm in, in, a, in a group chat. I see a message come by, hey, I can't get on Clubhouse because my signal is low. I didn't pay it no mind. I go on about my business. The next day, I'm on the phone with one of my business partners, and he was like, yo, have you heard about Clubhouse? I'm like, okay, this is the second day, two days in a row, I've heard about this Clubhouse thing. What is it? So I, I submit my, you know, my, my application to get on and everything. The third day, I ended up getting my invite. That was on, uh, what was that, Wednesday? And I spent hours on this platform. I mean, hours upon hours. There are so many, you know, professionals just dropping nuggets about any topic you can think about. And so, you know, there's like little rooms that you're into, and it's all verbal chat. So I find this room that says, you know, circulate the black dollar. I'm like, okay, that sounds interesting. Let me go see what this is. And I go into this room and it's just like, uh, a, you know, uh, a party for Chantel because it was Chantel's first time ever on the platform. And, you know, her friend has said, listen, you need to come on this platform. You need to talk about what you've built. And so I ended up being on there on Chantel's very first time ever. But there were hundreds wow. of people in there. She was inundated with questions and she ended up coming back the second day and doing another talk and hundreds of people. I said, wait a second, we got to get this girl on Canada Talk. I want to make sure that our platform knows about this as well. Uh, she has something that I think that is truly amazing. We've even started planning for an actual hemp track during this event. So I'm going to stop talking now, but I brought you in, Chantel. Tell everybody who you are and what you're working on. 
Well, thank you so much. Um, that is literally, yeah, uh, Clubhouse is amazing. If you do not know about it, uh, you need to get into it because it is, it is networking next level and people follow through. Like it's, it's not just, oh yeah, I'm gonna follow up with you. No, you have people in your inbox, in your DMs, like, so um, what day are you available? Or let's, I mean, people are stuff out, like they are executing, like this, this is the platform for execution and networking. Um, and so Eric and I, you know, he came, again, he came to my first party, it was, late at night and I think I didn't get off to like three o'clock in the morning. Right. I was inundated. When people saw recycle the black dollar, they like, what is this? And I need to get into it. Um, and pretty much recycle the black dollar is an economic call to justice. I'm sorry, the uh, call for action um, for the black community to reduce, reuse, recycle and reclaim resources in our community. And our mission is to fortify Black economic power and justice by connecting Black consumers to Black businesses, to Black organizations, to uh, Black service professionals. Uh, and we want to make sure uh, that we're doing that on an ongoing basis. And we are having our first annual com um, convention this, um, this Black Friday through Cyber Monday. The conference itself is free to be able to attend. Um, we also have free booths available for any businesses, any um, any organization, any service professionals. Um, if you want to get a larger booth, you can. It's only one fifty for a large booth, and for extra large, it's uh, three hundred. Um, and pretty much, you can. You're in this space. You're in this curated black space, um, twenty four hours a day from Black Friday to through Cyber Monday, and just being with us, learning from us, connecting with us. Um, our workshop tracks, I, I don't call them workshops, I call them family conversations. And then within those family conversations, we have tribe um, and village um, meetings. And um, we actually, again, executing. Um, the second day, um, we, I came back and I had a uh, conversation about just a, just a blanket conversation in Clubhouse. I created a room and it just said recycle the black dollar. And when I tell you, he said it was hundred, hundreds of people in there. I started at noon. I did not get off that platform until two o'clock. I talked from yeah. noon till two ten actually. <laughs> I got off. I had 124 emails in my inbox of wow. people to follow up. Crazy. People yeah. wanted to, and I said, wait, listen, it was, I think it was at one o'clock mark. I said, here's what we're going to do, friends. Um, at five o'clock, I'm going to host a workshop um, building Zoom meeting. If you want to come in here, you send me your email and I will send you the Zoom link. And from there, we knocked out three new tracks to our yeah. conference because the conference itself, it is a web-based um it is a web-based um, platform. And so anybody hey, can participate. Go ahead. Hey, Chantel, yeah, I, I want to really touch on something that you said, uh, you know, that you you kind of say in your, your, your I guess, your 30-second elevator pitch about it, and, and that this is a non, uh, you know, this event avoids oh, yeah. the algorithms of yeah, yeah. So social it's a, media. It's a, so, yeah, so talk it's about that. Yep, it's an uninterrupted space for Black people to be able to connect um, without the algorithms, without the Amazons of the world. It doesn't suppress our voice to be able to connect with each other. It is a space that you can actually connect directly by categories to whatever it is that you want to be able to connect to. Um, and I don't think a lot of people understand how the algorithm, the changing of the algorithm is really, is, is going to be a game changer. And people think that they'll be able to continue to sustain their business and reach a larger audience based on this algorithm. And that is just not the case. Yeah. And so I was intentional on creating this space so that, um, you know, with 41% of biz black businesses closing during COVID, I wanted to be intentional on making sure we had a space so that we can continue to connect. And that's what this is, making sure that we're able to connect with each other during the biggest um, consumption you know, buying weekend of the actual year. Because one thing we know for sure, Black people spend. Pandemic or not, we're going to spend. And so I want to make sure that if we're going to spend, we're going to spend and stimulate our community and not continue to spend uh, mainstream community. You know, did, did you, when you started this, was it intentional for you to be a disruptor? Because I see this as a disruptor to 
the the social media ag- and i'm saying this as a business owner who right now i'm completely locked out from even putting ads on facebook so everything that i do is is all organic and again we fall into those algorithms and you know we know that social media serves our content to people who are you know most likely to you know think like us believe what we believe consume the type of information we consume and so on and so that limits our circle to be able to tap into other communities that may you know not know about our product but want to know about our product so i'm I'm curious you know i I know you you did this deliberately to be kind of offline and so on but did you see yourself at the start as being a disruptor because i think you have some power that is really going to be untapped um so the short answer is yes um but a very conservative yes and here's the reason why i say that um well i won't say as conservative um I am professionally a event producer. Uh, for 15 years, I worked for the NAACP. Uh, and so advocacy is all I know, right? And so disruption is what I, is what I know. I'm trained to disrupt and to bring attention to um, things that need to be brought attention to as it relates to black people. Um, and the way in which I do that is through producing events that allow and uh, set the stage for our voices to be heard for our demonstrations to uh, take place and for the logistics for the logistics behind the scene to allow all of that to take place. And so organizers, in my opinion, are not all the boots on the ground, individuals, the field organizers, but it all are they we are also the individuals behind the scenes um, producing the platform, making sure that the people in front of the camera or the people that you hear on the bullhorn are able to do that in a way that can continue to galvanize our community. And so I do see myself as a um, conductor uh, for disruption, uh, right? And um, and it is very very intentional. Um, uh, The space, and I'll tell you, Recycle the Black Dollar really was, uh, it really started out as an idea for a directory. When I left the NAACP, I resigned and I was like, you know what? I'm going to start my own business. I'm, you know, I've done this. I've produced, you know, I've done it, the image award stuff. And I, you know, I did the spin drum metal and, you know, my height was when I produced the, the Quincy Jones show. And I was really feeling myself. I'm like, listen, if I can do this for Quincy Jones, I can do this for Chantel. So listen, we, we, <laughs> know. like I felt I was feeling myself. And so two years later, I launched my business. Right. Um, and so when I got out into the space, um, I built these connections over 15 years. Um, these were with black businesses across the country, but these were black businesses that could actually, um, their price points met the uh, national organizational budget. When I left, I had two national clients and I had other, I had a bunch of other clients that did not have that national budget. And I'm like, so how do I get them connected to additional service providers um, that may be able to meet their budget needs. And I'm like, man, somebody should really start a directory for service-based businesses. Like you have the restaurants, you got the this, that, third, but service professionals, you know what I mean? From the sign language to the floors to the, you know, that space wasn't there. So while we were, um, so while we were actually in the, um, in COVID, I realized being in isolation, I miss the advocacy work. I miss yeah. being able to um, to really paint um, through events that speak to our people. And sure. I'm like, how do I do this? And I said, all right, they galvanizing in the street. They shutting it down. They paying attention to black people. I see we finna shut this down with the election. I'm gonna help us pull out 2020 with another win and once the you know the the protests are over and we you know the the election is over and you know we just saved this country yet again right yeah so uh-huh. so let me, let me stop you right here for one second because i want to because you got so much to, i gotta i gotta piece out all this, all this good knowledge okay. you have and i want to bring dr adams in right quick because the person that you're speaking to the the entities the individuals that you're speaking to are being represented with Dr. Adams, um, being a business owner. And so Dr. Adams, um, introduce yourself. Um, you know, I'm so proud to have you on the show, but introduce yourself and talk about why what this young lady has put together is so, even just off of hearing it off of, off of first base, 
is so instrumental in helping a black business owner like yourself. Well, thanks for having me, folks. Uh, I'm Adrian Adams. I'm the CEO of Ontogen Botanicals, a CBD brand, um, putting other mining cannabinoids in now. But I can tell you, it's been very difficult trying to find uh, other professional services in the minority community to use. I've literally been going out of my way and having a hard time finding it. Um, so I'm very excited. This is the first I'm, I'm hearing about what Chantel's doing as well. And I'm very <laughs> excited about it because, you know, if, just like consumers at home, we business owners, we want to support too. We want to spend our dollars in the right place. But it's really hard to figure out where that is. So, you know, I've gone to these different national organizations that have minority owned businesses, even in the cannabis space and said, you know, give me a directory, like show me, all right, I need somebody to manage my social media accounts, let's say, who can I use for that? And nobody had a directory that was really specifically separated out by your profession. I, I got ones that were li listed by first name, you know, no, no, not even business name. Like it just wasn't useful information. So what you're providing is very interesting to me. Um, uh, when it comes to what you're talking about, though, it's funny because uh, I've done some writing on um, a platform called Medium, and in one of my articles, I actually was writing about kind of what you're saying in that you look at the suburban. I, I'm from the New York area uh, on Long Island. If you look in the New York metro area, if you look at these very wealthy, affluent suburbs that seem to have everything, they're, they're pretty much insulated. Everything you need, you can get in the community. So the uh, baker is selling their bread to the restaurant, who's also buying flowers every day from the florist, who's supporting the hardware store in the same strip mall. You know, everything stays in house. But when you go to minority communities, particularly urban, you know, if I go into the Bronx or whatever, everything gets extracted. Um, there isn't, you have food deserts, there isn't a great source of food, but then you have the, the dry cleaner that's owned by somebody who lives in the suburbs, the pizza place, suburbs, every dollar gets extracted out. And so there's nothing left. It's like not having soil. Yeah. Or roots to grow. You can't yeah. get growth in there like yeah. that. And so I think this is a fantastic idea because what you're talking about is the same concept, but on a national scale, a much yeah. larger scale. And then Eric, so you I, and I, I applaud you. And Eric, you and Dr. Adams are in the same boat from a from a product perspective. You have your hemp hearts, Dr. Adams. What type of products do you have with Autogen? And I put the website on. Um, if everybody's following us, go to the websites in the comment section. But talk about a little bit about your products, and then you guys talk about how even being able to find that consumer base just in general. But if you really want to be able to to sell to your 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 black community, how it's just I mean, it's just perfect what Chantel has and what what we're talking about here. Right. Well, with my brand, what, why it was created was actually for physicians and patients. It is a medical grade brand of CBD products. They're tested when they come out of the field. The, 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 uh, the end products are tested when, they're, when they go through production. And then after they're packaged and bottled, I take one of those at randomly, send that out to the lab. So when I test, I test for everything under the sun because I have to be able to go into a physician and say, hey, you can trust Ontogen products to give to your patients. And so I've done that. I've kept the prices reasonable. We have tinctures, which are really oils. Most people call them tinctures, but it's oil. That's a whole other conversation. Uh, yeah. Capsule, I have a balm. I have a muscle gel that you can roll on. Um, look, my products are fantastic. Everybody's going to say the same thing. If you want to try them, you can You can use the code INTRO25 as a coupon code, get 25% off. But what I would like to do is, and I, and I actually spoke with Eric about this briefly. We have to talk a little more, though. But I think each in this hemp space, each of us are trying to pull our own little cart. 
and we kind of need to hitch them together uh, and, and help sort of, uh, you know, create a little, more, a little more synergy. And I would like to have hemp parts on the site. I, I would like to sort of weave it all together because really it, it, hemp is, it should be a lifestyle. Hemp should be, it should be, you Absolutely. should have clothing, you should have food, you should have medication. It, th this should go on and on. And you know, Doc, you, you, do you that, we need to hook up. Yeah, I mean, you, you mentioned this as a lifestyle. And I think one of the things how, well, you know, what I said to uh, um, uh, Chantel was that, you know, we in the cannabis space, we find ourselves like in this, this little bubble you know, that's outside of normal, you know, business and commerce. Um, and we are recognize we recognize the power of the black dollar. You know, as a business owner, I certainly want to tap into that. But we have the, you know, if you look at it, if you break it down from a business standpoint and you, you, you look at the cost of obtaining your clients, it costs me more to obtain clients in the black community because I have to overcome the stigma. I have to educate about the products. I have to do so much more. And, and, it, and, and then when you add in barriers like not being able to advertise on, you know, uh, social media, you know, through paid advertisement, not having, you know, TV advertisement, we, we need platforms like what Chantel is building to be able to get our products right in front of people. Again, as she said, uninterrupted by the algorithm you know, <coughs> so that people can connect with us directly, see what our products are hear what our products, you know, how they can benefit people. Because, you know, like just yesterday, my second day on Clubhouse, I held a talk where I talked about, you realize that not all cannabis is illegal at the federal level. Because many times when we talk about this plant, people kind of convolute everything into it. So, you know, medical marijuana and adult use and CBD and, and even hemp for food and grain and fiber all gets lumped into one. And it, it, for our community, what that does is it means that we see it as being illegal federally. So we don't look and do the research and find the nuances and the on ramps to get into this. And we don't even look for the businesses that have products that are 100. My products are 100 percent legal, you know, 100 percent legal. They're not going to get you uh, high. There's no you know, cannabinoid effect to it. But again, that lack of education is something that we have to spend a considerable amount of time and resources doing it. So, um, you know, you know, Chantel's platform, I think is just really good in that regard. So let, let me make sure I'm clear on this and Chantel, um, help us out. So we understand like kind of what the, what the, um, um, yeah, how, what the setup is. So when it comes to the clubhouse, is the clubhouse a part of recycle the black dollars, uh, dot USA? Um, how do you how do you get on the clubhouse? People are saying they want to know where it is. Is it <laughs> so what's the is it the clubhouse a or okay? So go for it. The, the clubhouse is is it's in beta testing. It has not hit the masses, if you will, as far as social media. And the best way that I can describe it, it is like a podcast meets um, Instagram, right? But you're talking, so you're. And you're in a podcast space and somebody is hosting a meeting, right? And you say, you know what? You go into the hallway and you scroll down. You're like, you know what? I want to join this conversation on him. I want to join this conversation on uh, Recycle Black Dollar. You jump into that meeting. You just press it and you can either sit in the audience and listen or you can raise your hand and then they'll bring you to the, to the stage and you can actually talk and chime in and you can... Um, I mean, you don't even know who you're going to be next on the stage next to. I mean, there right, are the yeah. who's who's of <laughs> Seriously. the entire world. And let me just tell you this. Another thing. Black people just took over the clubhouse. This started out as a space for um, white people in Silicon Valley. They are, I, what I just heard yesterday is they're now having a conversation just for black people because we didn't yeah. even shut it down. Yeah, okay. it, it, Roz, so it is a separate social media app. And you, it is a it's like media it. app in beta testing. It's not connected to Chantel, what Chantel is doing. We just happened to meet on there. I was told right. by a business partner of mine about it. And so why you didn't tell me, E? Why you didn't call me and tell me, man? Listen, well, listen, listen, let me it, jump it his takes defense. time to get in. You let me take time, let me jump his defense. Not only does it take time to get in, when you come in, you only get one 
invite to invite somebody else right but sometimes people you know they don't even get their invite sometimes they just are in yeah and, i didn't get any advice right and everybody don't get invites right so then when you're in not only are you there but sometimes it is sorry um sometimes um it, it's a wait list to get in yeah. and you have to know somebody that's going to bring you in and they don't yeah. always give people invites it, it is it is some secret society it's that, revolutionary I, it I, is, I, oh it's, it's a just, game it changer is, it is definitely a game changer for social media i and you know how much i despise social media but it has consumed yeah. my life over the past couple of days i don't want to get too far into that but uh, you know in, in terms of clubhouse definitely go on you know the go into your app store uh look up clubhouse it's a it's a lady's face on the front of it and go ahead and just apply and then eventually you'll get an invite into it and you will see but what happened like she said it was a tech you know uh, a platform that you know they had a situation of white flight from the actual app where white people started getting off of the app and so now you literally have probably 90 something percent african-american professionals who are like vps i was on with a vp of fubu the other day you got uh uh styles p the rapper was on you got they are uh, I mean, on my panel you, the who, it became who, an I mean, people, people who worked at netflix people who worked at facebook and i mean tech developers to ceos and investors and angel investors and vcs and all in one place is people are doing pitches on there people but it's different rooms it get raunchy too don't get me wrong it's social yeah. media still you know at the night time there's some conversations that you know go a little bit you know you know in a, in a yeah. different direction but you know it's a great platform for for um just connecting with with people yeah. whether they're they're african-american or not right now it just happens to be overwhelmingly african-american African -American. yeah, yeah. Gotcha. but uh with, with chantelle which is again why it was perfect for chantelle's platform because she gets to get this message out to black owned business owners you know black business owners who are looking to connect with our community who are looking to get their products or services in front of our community right. and you know and, and that's what i think is uh you know one of the things she said that really stuck out to me is that this year i think has really shown the power of the black community in many different ways from us taking to the streets with with you know the george floyd uh situations uh to us really and truly you know making biden the nominee and then getting them into the white house you know uh to now it's like okay let's really flex our muscle and show where we really have strength is the black dollar and if we take right. our black dollar and we say this year 2020 we're going to be deliberate about where we're putting our black dollar you know it, it can it can really change the you know be a game changer for individual businesses as well as shaping the way that larger companies even deal with our community because now they recognize you know i mean everybody recognizes the power of the black dollar they don't respect it right they don't put the respect you know, on our name now yeah, yeah, I think this platform yeah. is going to make them start to respect it uh, a little bit better. So, and now, so Chantel, so, so Chantel can, don't don't lose that thought. So, um, question for you, and then add that thought into where you were going with it. So, where where should we be? What should we be thinking about right now? Everybody that's listening to you. We got some great people out here. Hey, Chelsea. Hey, Katie. You know, um, Antoine. We just got some folks that always follow us on Friday. What should we be thinking about going into this holiday season with RecyclerBlackDollar.us? What is your platform? What does it do? How can we get connected? And is it going to be something that's going to be available for us to continue having some connectivity after the holidays? So I'll start with the end in mind. One, Eric, I want to make sure that we are providing space in our directory. So if you can give me actual categories, I'll make sure that we're building our directory out that can really um, that really fit and properly suit the hemp CBD um, uh, um, ecosystem, right? So when people want to add to the directory, you can properly search by those titles. So if you just send me those, you know, even if yeah. it's broad and we can tailor it down later. So that's one thing. Um, two is what, pe what I want people to think about, and I really mean this. I want them to think about when we were at the peak <coughs> of the pandemic, what states did they open up first? They opened up of, of the 10 top um, states that had the strongest buying power. I believe it's like 
four or five of them were um, the first ones to reopen because they understand the power of our dollar. They said, to the hell with their health, they are going to bring this economy back online. And because yeah. they knew that, and because they were intentional about that, I want us to be intentional about the fact you do not care about our lives, we care about our lives. And so we're gonna make sure the thing that you do care about, we are investing in ourselves and that is our dollar. We had the power, we took our vote, you heard that, we're gonna take our dollar, you're gonna hear that. And if we can have as many black people, I don't care if it's a black sock, I don't care if it's a pencil or a toothbrush, you take that money and you drop it into a black business. You, I don't want to hear, you know, I'm overhearing where well, this black business costs too much. We cost so much because we have to buy a certain price point because everybody is exporting their money. Walmart and all these other businesses have the ability to sell to us at a low rate because all of us are buying from them. If we bring that money in house, we bring down, it is called supply and demand, right? So if the demand is then on our community, we are able to have the money so that the small black business can actually buy in, in larger bulk so that they can sell it to us at a smaller price point, at a lower price point, and then we can continue to stimulate our community. So I want them, I want black people to know that anything you think you need in the black space i mean anything you think you need in your house black yeah. people do. and the reason why i say it like that is i found that there's a black woman that makes paint we normally buy sherm williams or bear paint there's a black woman that makes paint i'm like so you have black woman paint on my wall and <laughs> like, well, i mean is this there's somebody to make black toothbrushes i mean you know a black company that makes um toothbrushes that's black i don't have to keep buying colgate toothbrushes every three to six months like those little things, I want people to be intentional about um, and making sure. And, you know, I'm partnering with um, the black, um, the, um, Mandy with um, um, official Black Wall Street. And we're reaching, all of us are, this space that I've created, it is not a me and I, my and I, it is a us. And I really want us as far as the eye can see for us to be able to come into this tent. When, when the world know we are spending the most, we're consuming the most, we're going to spend it on ourselves. And we're going to yeah. get quality product. And we're going to stimulate our own economy. We don't need you to cut no check. We're cutting our own checks to each other. Yeah. Right? And, 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 you know, uh, go, ahead. go ahead. No, I was, I was just going to um, um, hold that thought. I was going to like, ask Dr. Adams from your yeah, perspective. And then, you, and, and then piggyback on top of this too, E. But from your perspective of what you're doing right now, percentage wise are you you are a black business owner in the cbd space are you seeing how do you are you seeing any reflection of black dollars coming into your business and have you looked at and thought about how you wanted to get the word out and, and market to our black community about your product line or to those for black and brown physicians or what have you what's been like maybe some of your challenges big part of the problem is is that I just, I haven't marketed to retail until recently. Before this, I was marketing to physicians, which primarily in New York metro area, you're talking about old white guys. I mean, yeah. you know, I have to try and bring myself to a different sort of level of marketing to go after the black community and say, hey, here's some good medicine, quality medicine that's affordable, that's attainable for you to get into the, the cannabis space. Uh, and it's medic a black owned business. It's yeah. a right. black owned business. So I'm trying to, I've been trying to find, you know, marketing companies and other, and, and, you know, black folks who have those businesses because they're going to understand who I'm going for, for one thing. I, I can't find them. It, it's yeah. it's crazy. So I, I'm loving what, what, what Chantel's talking about. Um, and also, I think, you know, in terms of the hemp space, I think really the, the minority community uh, business owners and everybody else for that matter really needs to pay special attention to, to hemp and cannabis in general because it is so new. It is so burgeoning that there's still elbow room. There's still, you know, it's, you're still capable to push your way towards the stage and get up front. You know what I mean? But 
we won't be able to stay there soon. Yeah. But in the next two years, you're going to have all kinds of legislative changes and everything that the big boys are just waiting for. Yeah. And so if we all are operating as lone wolves, we're going to get crushed. Yeah. We need, we, need to, we need to use what you're doing, Chantel, and get people together like Roz, like Eric, like myself. And eventually, if we work at it, we'll figure out a way to where we can pull with bigger ropes. And yeah. we, you know, because we have to do it soon. I mean, for all of you, you who are out there watching, think of hemp products for the holidays. You can get hemp anything and everything. Hats, scarves, clothes, uh, my stuff for medication. Uh, Lord knows everybody's using it to, to get rid of some anxiety right now. That's, that's for sure. Um, um, and, it goes on and on. Food. I mean, the Eric's hemp parts, you can put in anything. More protein than beef, ounce for ounce. Uh, you know, there's so many different areas that we could push forward. But the hemp offers a unique opportunity for us to actually not just be on, you know, the, the consumer end of, of the spectrum, but to yes. all the way through the manufacture and the farming and the whole nine yards. You know, let me, let me tell you why I think this is also so important. And, and I think this is often understated in our communities. Um, what black businesses do when they're doing well. And, and, and I think, again, this is such a, when I think about the overall impact uh, of, of what Chantel is doing, you know, yes, it, I, I think it brings attention to our black owned brands. It puts money from our community. It circulates the dollar throughout our community and so on. But another way that that dollar is circulated is what we as business owners do afterwards. We, we typically hire people from our community. We typically, you know, especially in this cannabis industry, you know, I have an interest in hiring folks who've been arrested for it. You know, so we are going to do the things as a business that impact our communities in different ways. You know what I mean? And so we're the ones who are going to do that food drive at Thanksgiving. We're the ones yep. who are going to you know, uh, do that expungement <clears throat> clinic or, or whatever the case may be, even when from a business standpoint, it might not make all that much sense because we're spending money, you know, in, in order, but it's so ingrained in how we do business in our connection to our communities. And so again, what Chantel is doing is so vital because we know we can't depend on our, our state and local governments to really give us the resources we need to do what we need to do in our communities. It's our black owned businesses, our Hispanic owned businesses that do that hard work. And so yeah. they need you buying their products so that they can continue to do that work. And so again, when I think about the, the, just the, the, the overall impact of what we're talking about here, you know, when we really recycle that black dollar, we don't just, see our income and in our in our, uh, our our pockets getting bigger we also see our communities improving and the lives of those people in those communities improving as well absolutely i'm, I'm excited to hear that you're going to be working with the black wall street um project and are, are there any other partners out there that you're looking at working with and um and you know we want to of course you connected to e so you'll get connected to m for mm but like where who are some of your partners and um what are some of the long long range plans you have and to really galvanize attention to this and and to mobilize um and get getting folks to really just get their mind right so um one i want to before i forget i, I do want to offer up because it, it, there is a need right in this in this community uh, i i am willing to work with you guys to actually pull off a uh, a virtual hemp CBD conference, your own space, because it does seem like it's something that you guys actually need. This community, I won't say you guys, this community actually needs, um, and to be able to elevate that. Secondly, to that point, um, what Eric and I did was we actually created a track within the conference um, um, just for uh, CBD. I think it's uh, Black Owned Hemp CBD. I think it's the name of the track. And then we have four workshops. Uh, that is uh, that are actually in the track one each day that really speaks to this uh, particular you know, topic or the, to the community in this particular way. Um, and then uh, in addition to that, I would again employ uh, business owners, black business owners that are in that's in this space to go to our website, uh, recycle the black dollar dot us. There, are, even if you um, don't, you may not have the hundred and fifty dollars or the three hundred dollars to get a booth so that you can personally interact, get the 
free booth that's available so that people at least see you on the footprint. And it's a 24 hour space from Black Friday to Cyber Monday that people can interact on your space. And it goes, it, you provide your website, it goes to your website. It is uninterrupted space that will get you, the Black consumer straight to you and you build that relationship with them. Okay, so um, let, me, let me stop you right quick. So, is this the right website that we have up for the for the follow the, us? Yes, that's it. Mm -hmm, that's that's it. it. Okay, so let's 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 break this down for everybody that's listening because we got people that are going to catch this later on. So, if you want to be involved in regards to if you got a, a hemp product line, if you have a CBD product line, if you don't even have hemp or CBD, if you have professional services, you're an attorney, you're a marketing professional. You're someone that has a service, and you're you're and you're African American, black. However you want to, you got if you got one percent in you, then you're black. Come on, come on. Well, there you go. So come on, and so tell them again. They go to the website and what their options are. You can you can get the there's a one fifty dollar option, a three hundred dollar option, or there's maybe a free or a, a lower option. Walk them through it, Chantel. Yep. So you will go to um, recyclettheblackdollar.us. Once you get onto our website, there is a let's um, let's shop black owned on Black Friday. Right under that, it'll say um, I think sign up now or register now. You click that, it'll a pop up box. So um, a shadow box will pop up. It says a ten. You click a ten. That is your. Um, you it takes you directly to the platform that we're working in. Um, for this conference to sign up for a free participation. If you want to become a vendor, if you are a, a black owned business, hemp, a farmer, a author, uh, a lawyer, um, a, you know, a dentist, whatever you are, if you want to make sure that you're in front of black people. If you have, um, if you have it, have the space, you want to uh, have a larger booth, that's $300. It's just a larger footprint is pretty much what it is so that you can have um, larger brand awareness. Uh, if you that's three hundred dollars. If you have a uh, hundred and fifty dollars, again, that is a um, a higher um, a, a larger booth print uh, footprint. I'm sorry, or booth we call them, and um, that has your branding on it. And then if you don't have it, I still want to make sure that you're that you are in this space, and that is a free booth. Your logo is still a part of it. Um, people still will be able to access your website. You will still be able to get direct connections to from the consumer to your business uninterrupted. Hey, hey, Chantel, on on the uh, like I guess virtual exhibitor floor, is it possible to do? And, and this is what we see at uh, like cannabis conferences. It's usually like a row just for hemp, uh, where all the hemp. Yeah, you can filter, you can filter it out. So okay. if I want to work with you, because this is a very, um, it can be a very niche space. Right. So if you work with me and tell me what the categories are, I'll build it out. I'm so flexible. I want at the end of 2020 for the win to be through a global pandemic, black people showed y'all how to galvanize, how to vote, and how, how, to, vote, how, yeah. Yeah, and how to actually get yourself together and bring our community back together during a global pandemic when nobody else cared about us. We started caring for ourselves. We were speaking up about police brutality. We say the soul of this country and we're gonna save our own community by reinvesting in ourselves. Yeah, I love it. I love it, I love it. Just let me let me add to that real quick that, um, you know, for folks out there who are, who are watching this and thinking, you know, I want to get into this space. I want to be involved in, in some way. You just have the feeling like cannabis, the, the, the industry as a whole, is an opportunity that you're interested in. It speaks to you. You just have to keep educating yourself. It uh, Nobody can do that for you. You have to keep digging and digging and digging. Last yeah. time looking at, at pictures of puppies. And we're <laughs> asking questions and finding, and eventually, eventually, you just got to jump in the water, cold yeah. or not. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to flounder a little bit. But mm -hmm. do different things like, like take M for MM and, and other groups like that. Ask questions in there. Once you learn enough to ask good questions, go find people with the answers. That's right. And, after, and then after a while, you just have to do it. Because I'm going to tell you, in this cannabis space, I help people all the time who 
some of which have much better businesses than me right now, but that's a whole other story. But, you know, there's so much room for everybody. There's enough money and space and business for everybody. Nobody has the, the, the secret sauce. You just got to hustle. Yeah. And, and Doc, you know, one of the things that I'll add to that as well is I tell people not everybody has to be a business owner. They're business owners right. that need you to be a part right. of their team to get, the, you know, get from point A to point B. And you may have a skill set that can help them and add value to their business. Uh, so, you know, don't think that you have to reinvent the wheel or start from scratch. There are people out there who have, you know, like myself and Dr. Adams, you know, we, we've we taken the bruises and the lumps, you know, to, to get to where we are right now, you know, uh, so that you don't necessarily have to. And so, you know, joining those teams that have already kind of been there, that have, you know, bumped their, their heads a few times, but, you know, are, are still persisting through it. Those are some of the, the types of brands that you want to, you know, get into. And I think as well, that's one of the only ways that we as black owned brands in this space are going to be able to have sustainability is if we have teams that, you know, with brands that we wrap our arms around and Ross says this all the time, you know, we, we, we're going to have some winners out of this thing. Right. But only way that they're going to be able to compete down the road is if we wrap our arms around them, they become household names and staples in our community yeah. and, and and that's how those brands are going to be able to be supported uh you know be supported long term a absolutely yeah. Shout out to let, me, the let me just check in let me just second that because i should have mentioned that being <laughs> a business owner is very overrated sometimes yes <laughs> you know but, Big facts to, to be, and listen, to be uh, but listen but, and, but listen to be, to be somebody who can really step in and fill a niche you know I can't even tell you how much I would love to have somebody who could come in and take over the whole social media aspect of it. Oh, so you know, that would be, that would be, that would be great. But there's, you know, that's me, but there's somebody, every business owner needs people for different things that complement yeah. what they do. And, and yeah. so don't look like you need to create your own whole, whole company. That was a great point. And if I could jump in there and say two things, one thing that I've learned um, as a business owner is knowing my ministry. My ministry is event production. That's my ministry. Yeah. Um, I, and my other ministry is knowing what I don't know, right? And asking for help and being unapologetic about it, right? Um, and to that point, I wanna, I wanna make sure that I don't forget, um, we do have sponsorship opportunities um, because in order for this to be, this space to be free, we need sponsors. This community needs the, you know, the level um, about what you're doing raised. This is a perfect opportunity for you to become a sponsor so you can get in front of a larger audience if you're raising your brand awareness. Uh, again, sponsorship is not my, my ministry, but I know that it's yeah. important in order for this platform to be, um, to continue to be free and to be uh, available to the masses. Uh, so I just wanted to Put that yeah, and you know what? I'm gonna do this for you, Chantel, as well. I'm gonna take it a step further. If you were one of our, you know, uh, avid listeners and so on, if you got 25 bucks to donate or something, she also has a donate button on her website. Go donate and support this. Uh, and I'm gonna go even a step further. If you are some of our cannabis allies, our MSOs, our large uh, uh, companies that believe in the work that m mm does and believe in our our, our mission and so on. This is a worthy cause to be able to support. It's a non-cannabis, you know, uh, event, if you will, that if you want to connect with the black community, you want to show that you're real about it. You want to show that what we talked about earlier, that this is more than a moment that you you believe in this work and that it's important to you. Here's a worthy cause for you to sponsor and to support. So, again, go to the to the website. Well, listen. Once she create, uh, once you and uh, once you and Chantel create them hemp and cannabis tracks, this, this will be a this will be recycle the dollars. will have a hemp and cannabis footprint. And trust me, it is it is the number one growing industry. It's the number one employer in the in the country. It's the number one growing industry. It is not stopping. You're seeing legalization. I'm getting phone calls left and right from people, especially in Jersey, Dr. Adams. They're like, man, we we see adult uses happen. What do we do next? The ancillary businesses. The, the delivery services, the, the you know, um, cleaning the, businesses, the clean business, security, yeah. you know, 
Dr. Adams has said three times already, if you, if somebody has a social media and marketing person and call Dr. Adams today, <laughs> I know something. <laughs> my man has said it three times now. Excuse my language. <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's so real, time. Listen. I hope y'all listening. <laughs> listening. So, so again, so we don't want to be a dead horse, but Chantel, as we start to wrap up our our can of talk with Roz, um, just please leave us a word uh, of of you know of how important next week is going to be and what you see the future of recycle the black dollar. Um, I know this is a special event next week um, after the holidays, but where do you see it going into twenty twenty one? Um, so recycle the black dollar. And first, before I uh, close out, I just want to say thank you guys for welcoming, um, welcoming me into this community to be able to highlight what it is that we're doing for the larger uh, black community. Um, and so I really do appreciate the platform uh, to be able to spread the message about recycle the black dollar and our mission. Um, and I would say I would want to leave uh, this audience and everybody with one of my favorite African proverbs, and it's if we want to go quickly, go alone. But if we want to go far, go together. And in order for us to be able to do this, we have to be together. Um, and so, one of the things that um, Recycle a Black Dollar is we're doing our um, the organization itself is founded on four um, on four pillars. It's reduce the volume of money and resources that leaves the Black community. It is to recycle the Black dollar in the Black community exponentially longer than the six hours. It's to reuse the talents within the Black community to build and fortify economic justice and power and to reclaim our time in the life cycle of the Black dollar that built Black Wall Street. And with that, I want to make sure that people are aware of Recycle the Black Dollar and know that there is a home and there is not just a home for Black Friday through Cyber Monday, but we will continue to produce events for our community that is uninterrupted so that we can continue to stimulate our own economy as well as educate each other so that we can connect with each other. And our conferences include the things that we like, um, you know, that's just natural to us. We're bringing in the D9s of the world. We're bringing in the, you know, the virtual DJs. Um, somebody just asked me to bring in karaoke. I have the ability to um, build this out so it matches who we are. We don't, people come to us for culture, right? They come to us for direction and we're just gonna be in our own space. We're gonna be black, brilliant, um, and just, just excellent in our own space without any interference. And so again, I would just ask anybody that if you can to, be able to become a sponsor so we can open this up, this tent to can grow and grow and grow and grow. So we're including everybody because I want at the end of 2020 to be that black people dropped a bomb in the economic economy um, and that they retracted it and reinvested into themselves in the middle of a global pandemic when nobody really did care at the outset, but they decided to close out and care about themselves. Hey Chantel, I think we got you an ambassador, and you might get a couple more from this. They got some yes. connections. What, what's the email people can reach you at? Sure, oh. you can email me directly at Chantel C H A N T E L at recyclethebladollar.us, um, and that's C H A N T E L at recyclethebladollar.us. And you can also follow me um, or follow us. I don't want to say me because it's not just me; it is us. It's the community. Um, follow us at Recycle uh, Your Black Dollar on Instagram and Facebook. And make sure uh, if you have any questions, send me an email or you can DM me um, and I will follow up with you. Yeah. Now, I've only known about Recycle the Black Dollar for about an hour, but I'd say this girl needs less lips and more tips. Let's go. Let's go, Let's go. Let's go guys. Let's start contributing a little bit. And if there's anything I can do for anybody out there, uh, you can reach out to me at adrian at ontogen.life, O-N-T-O-G-E-N.life. And as the New York State Director for m for mm I'll do whatever I can to help you. He's an awesome man, beautiful wife, beautiful family, just pushing hard. If you guys want product, if you want good product that is that is tested that's coming from a medical from from a medical perspective um if you have if you're a caregiver if your mom your grandmother if they're dealing with any aches pains arthritis can't sleep 
um, psoriasis, I don't care what it is, go to Autogen, Autogen O-N-T-O-G-N dot life, um, the promo code entry, intro 25, you get 25% off. So don't say that we don't give you some gifts over here. Well, we, 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 we bring it to you, don't we? Yeah, right. and, a product and a free conference. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Man, listen. E, we're a sucker be on, fry, on fire every single Friday. Right. Um, <laughs> and, and listen, when, when Roz hit me up earlier this week, I was like, Roz, we got to have her on. Like, I, I don't know what we had planned for this week, but, you know, we got one week to get this girl on. I think it's important that we bring her on, and I think you guys see why. Um, this is something, you know, we've been talking about since this summer. You know, more than a moment, these are the types of things that I think matter uh, for our community. And, uh, you know, again, we, you know, I know we talk a lot about Black issues on this, uh, th this conversation, but we need allies. We need people from other communities to recognize that, you know, right now our house is still on fire. And so we need you to help us put out our house, you know, the fire on our house and get us back to where uh, we need to be. And so there's room for you all to support that as well. So um, as always, man, this has just been a, another awesome, awesome episode. Thank you. Him for guests. Go yes. get your hemp hearts. Somebody yeah. already bought some hemp hearts. So yeah, I see somebody already ordered hemp hearts. Definitely. If you need to, if you want some hip hearts by Thanksgiving, we just did a cooking show earlier this week. You can go check it out. We got some of your favorite recipes, mac and cheese with the hemp hearts, uh, uh, a, um, a stuffing with the hemp hearts. If you want a vegan cheesecake nice. with the hemp hearts, go check out the show on Hemp and Fork on Facebook. And then make sure you go buy your bag today. Because listen, you know, the mail situation is still bad during COVID. So if you want them by Thanksgiving, I'm just saying. I'm just saying, if you want them by Thanksgiving, you need to put your order in today. But uh, again, as always, y'all, um, next week is Thanksgiving. Take some time, reflect on the things that you're thankful for, reflect on the ways that you've been blessed. I think at the very least, we all should be thankful that we are still breathing and are alive uh, in this crazy, Woo! crazy year. So again, be safe out there, protect yourself, get some rest this week. And, uh, you know, as always, even though it's a short week next week, we got work to do. We, we got, got work to do. <laughs> hey, we'll see y'all next Friday on Canada Talk with Roz. We love you guys. Make sure you tell a friend, share it with a friend. We're here every Friday, 1 p.m. Eastern. Talk to you soon. Have a great day, everybody. All right.